Recorded live at Vauxhall Comedy Club, this is the Ding Dong Gong Show. Are you ready for the Ding Dong Gong Show? That's better. Well, please welcome to the stage your host, Mark Cram. Hello, Vauxhall. How are we doing? It's going to be, as you can see, the room is very weirdly lit because we have no idea what's going on with the fucking lights right now. You guys in the audience are actually better lit than I am right now, which is a weird way of going about this. Anyway, welcome to Vauxhall Comedy Club. Uh, give me a cheer if you've come for a good night of comedy. Give me a cheer if you know exactly what you've come to. Give me a cheer if you just thought you were coming to a normal comedy night. Lower your expectations way fucking down from where you had them. This is the Ding Dong Gong Show. What you're going to see tonight is a lot of acts trying to beat the gong. Uh, there is no actual gong, but Lee will say some words. Uh, and then, so basically, it's going to be fucking weird. You could see some fucking genuinely brilliant acts that have never performed it before, or you can see some fucking lunatics who think they're good at this. Does that sound good to you? Yeah. Right, that's a bit so. Anyway, my name is Mark. I am your host this evening. Thank you very much. It's lovely to see you all. Give me a cheer if you've been here before. Have you been to the show before, mate? Yep. What's your name? Joel. Joel. Joel? Yep. Joel. Tell me about you, Joel. What do you do, Joel? Uh, watch TV. You watch TV? You're a very exciting man, Joel. Uh, <laughs> Joel, when you're not watching t like, TV, do you have a job? Yeah, I have a job, yeah, yeah. What's your job, Joel? Finance. You work in finance? Yeah. yeah, you're not the most exciting man in the world, are you? <laughs> uh, so, Joel, what do you do in finance? Trade you trade commodities. You trade commodities? Joel, I'm going to ask you a question as a financial expert. On behalf of everybody in the room, are we fucked? Yeah, we are. Wow. No hesitation from Joel there at all. Uh, Joel, who are you here with tonight? Um, partner, James and, uh, uh, mother. So James is your partner? Yeah. No. <laughs> I wish. You wish as well. All right. Mild homophobia from the front row there. Good times. Uh, is that your mum on the end? No. No. Which one did you say your mum? You, your mum. Sorry, your partner's mum. Okay. So do you like, do you approve of Joel? Yeah. Yeah, no. That was way too eager. It felt like a lie. Yeah. Uh, so how long have you and Joel been dating? Six years. Six years. How's it been going? Good, good. No, no, no engagement yet? Why are you dragging your feet on that, Joel? What's going on, buddy? Do you have to answer? Yeah, that's how that fucking works. That's how, uh, I don't know if you've ever had a conversation before, Joel, but yeah, you have to answer when I ask questions. Sorry? Hopefully soon. Have you got a plan? Why the fuck you lying? Why are you always lying? That, by the way, is Lee Hudson there in the sound booth. Absolutely nailing the timing of the sound effects. As always, Lee's, Lee will be the god, uh, god voice tonight. You'll hear a lot of Lee. Lee, say hello to the people. Hello, people. That's, pe that's the people. Fuck that's Lee, Lee. That's people. Good. Other people in the front row. Are you part of Joel's crew as well? No. No, no. How do you two know each other? Uh, we know each other from university. You know each other from university? What's your name, mate? Uh, Max. Ma Max. 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 And am I, am I detecting an accent, Max? Uh, yes. Where are you from, Max? Try to guess, fuck off, Max, I'm not flirting with you. <laughs> I mean, I am bi, but you're not my type. Uh, in case the front row are wondering, by the way, it's no, yes, no, yes. Um, <laughs> turns out you were the entire time, Max, who knows? Uh, so, Max, you're from Canada? Uh, no, from Austria. You're from Austria? I wasn't expecting that. And who's this with you? Sorry? Yeah, what's your name? <laughs> Michael, Michael, where are you from? Austria. Austria as well. Have you cut, are you over on holiday? Yeah, yeah. They looked at each other just to confirm. That was weird. Um, <laughs> So Michael and Max, so how, Max, how do you guys know each other? University. University. Which university did you go to? Uh, JKU Linz. JKU Linz. Uh, I don't know why I asked. I don't know any Austrian <laughs> universities. So what did you study? Physics. Physics and so, oh, like what, sort, what, and what jobs are you doing now? I work at BMW. You work at BMW? Is that what a physicist's dream, is it? <laughs> Not necessarily. Not necessarily, but it's worked out well. You? Software engineer, so n definitely not for you. Good. Big round of applause for two physicists who dreams have died. <laughs> We've got a lot of people wearing hats and coats and hoods in the crowd tonight. Is it fucking cold in here that I'm not aware of? You guys are like, like you're about to do a fucking robbery in the middle of the room there. What's your name, pal? Uh, Shay. Shay, and is your girlfriend with you? Yeah. Why are you both hiding your heads? My hair isn't nice. Your hair isn't nice. Yeah. What's, what's your excuse? Oh, yeah, yeah. You could have said I'm just doing it for solidarity, mate, and once you yourself some points. Not. So, Shay, what do you do, mate? I'm a mechanic. You're a mechanic. What sort of mechanic? Cars? Cars. Yeah. What's the best car? Uh, GTR. GTR. He had a fucking answer to that, didn't he? I didn't know that. <laughs> so, Shay, how long have you two been dating? Uh, nine months. Nine months. How's it going? It's actually good. 
It's actually good. <laughs> See, that's more enthusiasm than you show for your sixth fucking year relationship. So it's actually good. So how did you two meet? You knew each other from nursery? Oh, that's really fucking sweet. So did you, were you dating other people and then found each other again later on? Yeah. Basically what I'm asking is, did you cheat on other partners to get together? <laughs> well, one of you did, because I can tell from the reactions. <laughs> and it was definitely fucking Shay, you player. Yeah. Welcome to the gig, guys. Uh, my, name, as I said, my name is Mark, some things you need to know about me. I am a bisexual. <laughs> uh, my brother is a Royal Marines Commando. <laughs> yeah, just saying, guess which one daddy's more proud of. Uh, <laughs> shockingly, not the one that calls him daddy. Uh, always thought it was in my head that my parents liked my brother better until Christmas last year because at Christmas last year me and my brother both got, got bought coffee mugs my brother's coffee mug said world's best son my coffee mug said Mark <laughs> somewhat of a kick in the balls for this evening right. so, uh, anyway, so as I said ladies and gentlemen this is the Ding Dong Gong Show where you're going to see there's a lot of new acts coming up trying to win a spot at playing this club in the future and they are going to get some advice from some uh, veteran acts on the circuit and they are going to give them some feedback as we go along would you like to meet your judge, judge acts for the night? Yeah. first of all please welcome to the stage the wonderful Kate Barry <laughs> And joining Kate is the wonderful Junior Booker! <laughs> Keep cheering, guys! Oh, gosh. Kate, Kate, what are you looking for from the acts tonight? Just not shit. Just not shit. Is that what I was for? judging it last weekend and I wanted to put a gun in my mouth after every <laughs> act. So, some actual fucking jokes to make these wonderful people laugh tonight. There you That's go. what I fucking want. There you hear. go, guys. Please don't lead to Kate's suicide this evening. That's what we're looking for, you guys. <laughs> wow. Uh, Junior, what are you looking for? Um, uh, positive vibes and good energy. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. But I want that too. Yeah, but I want that Good energy, yeah. Good karma and all that good stuff, whatever. Yeah. You sound fucking enthusiastic, yeah, so that's yeah. an idea, you're not gonna lie. Uh, so, um, guys, I've not got any dildos. What? Oh, yeah, I was promised dildos. Oh, what the fuck? oh, there are dildos. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, sorry, out of context, that sentence sounds really fucking weird. Uh, basically, you guys get to vote on uh, if whether an act makes it to five minutes or not. Uh, basically, when you, there are four of you that are put on as judges, when three of you get to vote with the person off, then they are off the stage. You have a fucking there that goes until. Right. So, who would like to be a judge this evening? Come on, guys, and a little bit of enthusiasm. Who wants to be a judge this evening? There's a man there with a bat. What's your name, buddy? Paolo. 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 Tell me about you, Paolo. <laughs> The fucking energy from Paolo is good, isn't it? Uh, Paolo, give me something or you're not going to be a judge man with that attitude. I, I just, I get my English, show. motherfucker, do you speak? <laughs> <laughs> you dislocated your shoulder? Yeah, during sex. During sex. So I need a fucking dildo, let's go. You need a dildo, let's go. Yeah. Wow, um, <laughs> does anyone in the room want Paolo to have the dildo? <laughs> no, good, well, he's not getting one, good. Uh, who, who else said he wants them? What's your name there? Laverne. Laverne, Laverne, tell me about you. You're a project manager of what? IT software. IT software. Does anyone feel like Laverne feels like a good person to be a judge? Yeah. Laverne, are you capable of being harsh when you need to be harsh? Absolutely. 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 Laverne, would you like a large dildo, a small dildo, a medium dildo? The bigger the, the, bigger the better. <laughs> We're going big black dildo for you, Laverne. There you fucking go. Catch that, Laverne. You ready? Thanks. One for Laverne. There. Who else wants a dildo? Man there. What's your name, pal? Ryan. Ryan. Ryan, tell me about you. You're American. Not a good start, Ryan, not gonna lie, mate. So, Ryan, you're American. Uh, tell me, what do you do for a job? Uh, project manager. Project manager as well. Do we want two project managers judging? I don't know about that. Paolo, you lost your fucking chance, mate. Stop fucking mouthing at me. So, Ryan, Ryan, I'll tell you what, Ryan, uh, what do we think? Do we think Ryan gets a dildo? Yeah. Yes, he does. Ryan, but yeah, yeah, you're definitely. Kate's chosen you the small one, Ryan. I don't know what message she's trying to send you, but it's fucking happened. There you go, catch that, Ryan. Good lad, there we go. Check it out. <laughs> right, so we got the medium sized one, but this one, guys, has balls. Who wants the dildo with the balls? Her hand went straight up. She's like, I've been waiting for the testicles all fucking night. What's your name, fan of bollocks? Uh, <laughs> Shannon. Shannon, Shannon, about you, Shannon. What do you do, Shannon? I'm a teacher. You're a teacher, what do you teach? Uh, chemistry, 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 and science. Now, teachers, I find, are quite nice people. Are you capable of crushing people's dreams this evening, Shannon? No hesitation. Right, so does Shannon get a dildo? Yeah. Shannon gets a dildo. Catch that, Shannon. It's going to fly through the air. 
Almost hit that woman on the head. Uh, there we go. We got one more judge to decide, guys. Who wants it? This is the long double ended one. So this one is arguably good for a couple. Uh, that's what you want to do. Who wants it? Arguably good for a couple. There's a couple in the room uh, with two hoodies on in the middle who I feel like might be superb at us. Do you guys, would you, do you want the double ended dildo, Shane? You're good. All right. Anyone want a double ended one? Yeah. Fucking yeah. <laughs> Since you're the only volunteer who's not Paolo, you're looking fucking good, mate. What's, what's your name, man? James. James, James, what do you do, James? Uh, I'm a civil servant. You're a civil servant? Hang on, what branch of the civil service do you work for? DEFRA. DEFRA, what does DEFRA do? Environment. Environment, environment's fine. Environment gets a dildo. Hey, hey, got me again. Right. So that is your judge, ladies Now, the rules are simple. Acts will come on the stage. They will have a grace period of one minute where they cannot be voted off the stage. After one minute, you will hear this noise. After that, and that means the judges, that you can then put your uh, dongs in the air if you feel like they are not doing a good job. Basically, if they're not getting any laughs, put your dong in the air. If three of you put a dong in the air, you will hear this noise. Three dongs. Three dongs, and, that, and then they're out. And you will hear this song, and they're Another one bites the dust. Now, I missed out already, so if you put one dong in the air, you will hear this noise. One dong. If you hear two dongs, you will hear this noise. Two dongs. It's pretty fucking simple, guys, right? So, you ready for this? Do you understand the rules? Mark, Mark, you, Mark, 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 if they win though, if they survive. If they, oh, if they survive, they make it to the clap off final at the end of the show where you, the audience, will decide the winner who will get back to get a booked spot at the Vauxhall Comedy Club. <laughs> and the rest of them will all go home in shame. Now, what we have, we have a book list tonight of uh, nine wonderful acts. And, and on top of that, we have the bucket of fucking destiny. Now, there are certain acts here of book spots tonight. They are acts that I had to send in a video so they have to be approved in some way. There are also people in the fucking bucket who has anyone who wanted to put their fucking name in there and that can be fucking anything, guys. And that is where the night can go fucking crazy. Uh, so uh, we'll be doing a few of these. If the night's going short, we'll get a few of those out of there as well. That'll be taken at my discretion and your discretion as well. Does that sound good? Yeah. Right, are you ready for your first act? I don't know anybody's name, so I'm going to be reading it off a clipboard. I need some energy from you guys. So this side of the room, cheer now. Yeah. This side of the room, cheer loud on that side. Yeah. This side, cheer loud on that side. Yeah. Cheer all together. Yeah. All right, please welcome to the stage your first act, Kimberly Policella. How y'all doing? Yeah, Lithern, you're looking lovely tonight. Uh, Mark, well, you're looking a bit tired. It's probably time for you to decide what you want. Burial or cremation? I'm just kidding. Looking at you, you should donate your body to science. Okay, I'm a mama to three mostly grown-up kids, but y'all probably couldn't tell that by, by all the work I've had done. No, uh-uh. Now, any wrinkles you do see is because they are still financially dependent. Now, um, one of those kids told me before I came out tonight that this outfit makes me look like a slag. And I was like, good, because that's the look I was going for. Honey, ever since I got called a MILF, I have an image to maintain. Now, I'm not really a slag, but, you know, there was a time in my life like a you or probably you when I was you know kind of a slag a little bit slaggy kind of slag slag you know for a few years a One few dong. Two slaggy dongs. years three dongs <laughs> okay um Kimberly, it was, it was uh, unlucky. It's often start hard starting off the night and the judges seem fucking quick on the draws tonight, so that was harsh. Um, I would say it was a really weird choice to make jokes about me being old when you're older than me. Um, <laughs> like, not, like I, I, if I was like an old guy, that would make up, but I'm 35. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, so yeah, I, think, I don't think you got off to a good start with the crowd and I, I don't think they understood what you were trying to do. Um, How long have you been doing comedy for? Yeah. Okay, oh, okay, okay, so you're quite new to this. Yeah. Um, so this vibe, do you know what slag means, by the way? The way you were using it, you were like slaggy slag. It was like too many times, a little bit, I would say. But this this vibe of like the sparkly heels and the this like, is this just like your onstage persona or is this just like who you are? No, it's on stage. It's, your it's part of the bit. It's part of the act. It's part of the act. Okay, I think maybe... 
I just, yeah, then maybe lean a little bit more into it. Because actually, like, being like a cunty housewife, not saying that you're a cunt, <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? Like, being a rich, kind of cunty housewife is actually a funny bit to be like an over the top kind of thing. I would lean into it even harder then and kind of go for it. Um, but yeah, I think off the top, you have to win them over. And you can't, yeah, go in on somebody as aggressively unless you know how to handle it off the top, I would say. So don't, I, w I would say, when you're so new, avoid interactive stuff because you won't be able to handle how it turns if you're too new. Like, it took me years to figure out how to work with a crowd like that. But, um, you know, good try. Cool. Junior, what do you think? Um, yeah, it was very weird how you came after my, I thought you guys might have knew each other. I thought that was blunt. No, no, we've never had a conversation. Yeah, I thought that was <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that was such a bad judgment call because yeah. you judges say about um, being in the room and saying something yeah. about in the room, and mm. I just thought it was funny, no, but my this, bad judgment. Yeah, I thought you might be his mom or something. That's no. why you said that. No. <laughs> 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 and I said. know I'm older yeah. than you, Mark, but I was yeah. just kind of going for the tired, look, haggard you, sort you of good, thing. He looks good, though. You don't look tired or haggard. That's. I good. love that we back this into I'm tired and haggard, he's not tired. just old. Uh, You're cool. not going to welcome me back here, are you? I mean, I'm not in charge. Um, <laughs> but no, no, but are you normally funny <laughs> on other shows? You've done comedy before. Yeah. And, and this normally works. It normally does. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, I mean, I haven't done, I haven't done this thing. But, um, but to what kind of shows do you do? Like variety shows? No, what no, no. I, like, I, do a, I do just different open mic. Well, a lot of G&B comedy. GMB. 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 It's the bringer with Kyle Wallace's gig. Okay. Kyle Wallace's okay. gigs. Um, and you're not from London. You've got an accent. Where are you from? Texas. Texas. Okay. But I live here. We live here now. But okay. I would lean into that. Like lean into being like the Texas, like go in and like I, I would just like because it's what sets you apart, right, from being over here particularly. Oh, yeah. Like, There's yeah. potential for the characters. Uh, really yeah, good. for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, t I normally do, but I just think I screwed myself by going after Mark. But I mean, yeah, that, I mean it's like lessons learned, right? We yeah. all do that. We all yeah. fucking yeah. do yeah. gigs that we learn from. You just right. learn to read a room. we got to move on, but look, one more round of applause for Kimberly Porcello! Woo! These boots are made for walking, and that's just what they'll do. One of these days, these boots are going to walk right, all so over you. Are you ready for your next act, guys? Please welcome to the stage, I'm, I'm going to say it's Eli Maloof! Uh, thank you, thank you. Good evening, my name is Eli Maloof, which is exactly not how he pronounced it. It's fine, I've been in, I've been in London since January and like, I've had Eli, Elijah, Elias, Susan a few times. It's fine, man. You know what drives me mad? When someone asks me, like, hey, what are your pronouns? No, 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 no. You're learning my name first. Then you can ask for alternatives. <laughs> You're detecting an accent. You're right. I'm from Beirut, Lebanon. I actually had a thicker accent when I moved here. So I did those online accent reduction courses. But I did, like, the first two lessons. And now I just sound like I'm taking the piss of the English language. <laughs> Either that or I just took out my wisdom teeth today. Uh, I moved to Elephantine Castle, and depending on who you ask, they would either say that's a nice area or that's a dodgy area. I would say it's a bit of both. It's nice because of all the new developments. It's also dodgy because I keep stabbing people. <laughs> Rent is way too fucking high. I call it a community service. Keeping council tax, band A. I'm not religious. Uh, I was raised Catholic. I'm not religious, but I do have a favorite Christian holiday, which is uh, Good Friday. It's the day Jesus died. <laughs> yeah, usually Jews and brown people laugh at that, but fine. <laughs> it's all fine. Favorite activity to do on Good Friday? Go to church, sit behind someone taking it way too seriously. Wearing black, weeping, listening to sermon. I just love to sneak behind them and yell spoilers. He's gonna come back on Sunday. <laughs> He'll be back. I read the books, it gets better, it picks up. There are a few sequels, there's Islam, there's Scientology, then it got cancelled. I just hope that Disney picks it up. I want Jesus 2 starring Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> oh, man. I didn't want to live by myself, so, uh, so I rescued a kitten. I took him to the vet. The vet told me, like, you should neuter him. I asked why. He said, because he'll develop, so he won't develop testicular cancer. I said, like, you know that applies to me too, right? He said then, yeah, but he'll eventually get aggressive. But yeah, he's a cat. 
It's supposed to be aggressive. Why don't we do that to our kids? That, that's more fun. Like, I'll get a call from the principal, like, Eli, yeah, your son has been beating other kids. Like, ah, I should have neutered them. <laughs> that's on me, chief. That's on me. You're from the US, right? Yeah, are you familiar with the Beatles? Uh, not quite, you know. Stay with me. Beatles are a group of four British dudes who in 2012 traveled to Syria to join ISIS. <laughs> you know, the fun bunch. They're on in Guantanamo Bay, they were recruited by one guy. Now that got me thinking. Having an ISIS recruiter implies having an ISIS HR department. And what's that guy's day to day? Let's try and explore. Like, where does he go? Does he go on job fairs or just LinkedIn? Does he post weird shit? Like, you know, uh, team worker, hard worker, can operate a remote? Apply now. Do they draw them in with like benefits? Hey, we do have dental, which means like someone who picks your teeth up, just strike after. <laughs> after you've done, someone picks your teeth up. What did you, what, what's the interview like? Uh, where do you see yourself in five years? If you say anywhere, you already failed. You're applying for ISIS. You can't be anywhere in five years. You know, I've been doing stand-up for quite a while. Is this supposed to happen? <laughs> like, how bad is the property market in London? We're under a bridge, trains passing overhead. I don't, uh, it's actually where I met my girlfriend. She was sitting in the front row, kind of looked like you a bit. Feeling lucky? <laughs> she came to visit me in June. We decided to go spice up our sex life. It was the first time we went to a sex shop. And it was actually the first time I came into contact with a dildo. You know, the biggest one, you're holding the biggest one. <laughs> exactly. I don't know if that counts, by the way. <laughs> but it was the first time I saw a 50-inch dildo. 50 inches. Look at me. 50 inches. I don't think you're getting it. Let me give you a visual representation of what 50 inches look like. I knight you with 50 inches. Kiss the tip. You know what? I'm not the one to judge or anything. But if you need like 50 inches to actually feel pleasure. All I do is win, win, yeah. win, no matter what. The punchline. Money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the field. Ladies and gentlemen, your first finalist. Hey, can Should I? Am I saying your name right? Yeah. Eli. Yeah, Ellie, yeah. Ellie. Yeah. Ellie. Ellie. Can Ellie. I finish the punchline? Sorry. <laughs> don't be upset. You got through. You won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so, uh, fucking, uh, like, you started off, you got stronger as you went along. I think the yeah. kitten, the guy in the face of the mic stand was fucking good. Uh, did you enjoy that, sir? <laughs> How long have you been doing comedy, Ely? Uh, in, in, in English since March. It's English since March. How long were you doing? What's your, what's your native language? Sorry, uh, Arabic. Arabic. How, Arabic. How, long, how long were you doing in Arabic? Before it's that? 2018. 2018. So you're relatively new in both. Uh, so it's incredible yeah, you're going to be doing it in the second language since March. I don't know about even YouTube, but I can't do comedy in English, barely, let alone yeah, the second did, language. Where was you doing comedy in Arabic, though? Where? By Lebanon. By, by they do comedy in Lebanon? Yeah. yeah. Wow. We so we <laughs> There's a whole world out there, Junior. I didn't expect yeah. that. <laughs> I didn't expect that. It's <laughs> where I got the ISIS joke. I didn't expect that. Exactly. <laughs> no, because you, you sounded like an English person taking a piss out of Arabs. You sounded like someone doing an accent. Your, your, your oh, voice really? is very funny. That's your normal voice. <laughs> now, the first I'm, time I, I hear yeah, it. Are you actually Arabic? Really? You're actually from the Lebanon? Yeah. Okay, that's oh, yeah, good. You've yeah, got yeah. a very good accent, so it already worked, and everyone loved you. Great time, and you paused, and no one, everyone was with you. Everyone, no one left, because you've got a good stage uh, persona. It's not a character, this is you. Yeah, definitely. It's not Ali G kind of thing. You're not from Hampton Heath. <laughs> Do I look chav? Yeah, you, yeah. Look, you seem like a... a really, this? <laughs> yeah, you seem like... I just think you wanted to pull off a mask and reveal yeah, this yeah, different yeah. guy <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> no, be very confident, very... You don't seem like from Lebanon. You seem like... <laughs> <laughs> Stop before I, you I'm going to throw it over the cake. I'm just going to throw it over the cake. Oh, my God. Uh, no, I... Honestly, I think it was great. Yeah, they were with you. I think it, parts were, like, kind of slowed. It's just going to take... Um, but you're fucking new to doing it in English, too. It'll just take tightening up, right? It's just editing out yeah. unnecessary words, unnecessary things, so you're not meandering too much. 
But it will just take tightening up and practicing and practicing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I also think you're really good off the cuff. Like you just in your combat to junior there, I think like you could do more crowds. Yeah, stuff totally. Like you're like yeah, you're likable. But anyway, your first big round of applause for your first fighters, Elon Musk. Do you guys want to go to the bucket and see who's in there? All right. Okay. So would you like to pull it out, Kate? What we got? The chaos. This is the chaos. Kate, want to read that out for me? We got. You got your own mic. Adam Cleveland. Adam Cleveland. Oh, he's coming out of the audience. Oh no, he's not. That's just going for it. <laughs> Hi guys. My name's Adam. Hi. Um, my name's Adam, and as you can tell, I went to special school. <laughs> um, what they don't tell you about special school, you get picked up on a bus. At the front of the bus is a cage, so you can't get the fucking driver. <laughs> At least this guy finds it funny. Um, when I was going to school, first day of school, first day of special school, I was on the bus, and there these builders, and they're screaming at us, you dirty window lickers, you fucking dirty, dirty window lickers, I hope you die. And I was like, Pfft. my first day, why would they say this? Look behind me, kids licking a window. You gotta kind of give it to them, it's fair cop. <laughs> I was in maths at special school, and um, Alfie Argent comes running in, and he goes, Adam, guess what? I go, what? And he goes, somebody's pissed in the bin. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, somebody's pissed in the bin, up to the brim. And I was like, show me. <laughs> so I ran down, ran down to the bin, bin full of piss. But, it, but it, it wasn't all the way full. There was like a little gap. So I pissed in the bin. <laughs> um, as you can tell, I fuck. And when I fuck, I fuck hard. Um, and if you want to fuck hard like me, <laughs> what you need is catchphrases. Oh no, pick up lines, fuck. Anyway, <laughs> not catchphrases, different joke, different time. Anyway, um, I'll give you some catchphrases, I'll give you some pick up lines. Um, do you have rickets or are you just pleased to see me? <laughs> if you don't understand that, you're not smart enough. That's basically what that is. One um, dong. Fuck you. Um, the, um, are you on your period? Cause I'm lacking in iron. <laughs> love it guys, love it. Um, <laughs> when I was 14, I got a bow and arrow for my birthday. And I told my little brother, what you ever do, what you dare, I don't, you dare, don't touch my bow and arrow. Next morning, six o'clock in the morning. I didn't, I think I killed a cat. And I was like, what did you say? And he said, I don't think I killed a cat. And I was like, what? And he goes, I think I killed a cat. And I was like, show me. <laughs> Went downstairs, cat with an arrow Two in dogs. it. Fuck you, dude. I thought, Three oh, dogs. fuck you as well. Another one buys the dust. Adam Cleveland there, handling his dongs with grace and humility. Um, Adam, uh, yeah, unlucky. The, they, they went in quick succession there. I, I liked what you did. The energy you brought at the beginning I thought was really good. Uh, you could clearly you had like the callback lines to uh, I, show me that, show me that. I was hoping that that was going to um, keep coming back. Uh, how long have you been doing comedy, Adam? Um, I've, been, oh, I've been away for like seven months, and this is my first one back in first like seven. First back? So you don't, no, yeah, I've like done like six, six months before, but this is my first in like seven months. Oh, cool. Uh, so, and, like, so you've been doing it for a little while before that? Yeah, uh, like six months. Do you have a day job, Adam? Uh, yeah, I'm a water sports instructor, so not water really. Water sports instructor? Is that like the sexy water sports or the...? I teach windsurfing, so yes, very sexy. I mean, the kinky people in the room know what I meant by that. Uh, urine. Anyway, good. Uh, so, Adam, because uh, you did, I was saying, because you did a lot of jokes about pissing in bins and stuff. Uh, Adam, yeah, I've got uh, a joke. Yeah, so I think maybe, I mean, I liked what you did, maybe just less sort of gross out all the time. And I think that's what did for you, Dan, because you did one gross out routine, then started another one. And then I think people felt you were just going to stack them on top of each other. But you've got a likable manner on stage, man. Just maybe diversify the material a little bit more, and you might get a little more out of it. Kate, what do you think? Uh. I don't know what to say right now. Um, you don't have to say anything. That's fine. Thanks. <laughs> that, that's not going to help you. Uh. Yeah, that's, that's, I, you were making me wish the first one was back on stage, to be honest. So I'm just going to not say anything. Junior. Uh, uh, don't fuck with cats. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're just doing okay. Then you said you killed, someone killed a cat. They, they hated that. Then you said, yeah, don't tell them to fuck off all the time as well. You're, you're kind of scary. 
I don't know if that's your thing, but I think, yeah, so when you say fuck off, it seems like I actually mean it. I actually want to hurt someone. So, yeah, but I liked your material. Piss, the pissing in the bin joke, the, wick, the, the licking the windows joke. The catchphrases thing was actually really funny. Yeah. I thought you had sex catchphrases. I was really curious about that because I've already got pickup lines, but I ain't got sex catchphrases. So, <laughs> <laughs> what are your pickup lines, Junior? What you got for us? No, no, I'm not going to give them away. <laughs> Does this smell like chloroform? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Adam, Adam unlucky. So it's, it's hard coming out of the bucket as well because you don't know when you're going to be going on, so that's a lot harder to get going. But uh, keep going, come back again, see us another time. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam and Cleveland! Oh, bitch, get out the way! Get out the way, bitch, get out the way! What a tune to play, right? So you ready for your next one from the list? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, your next act, please welcome Beth Franklin! Uh, I'm Beth. Um, hypothetically, what should a girl write on her dating app profile that neither suggests that she's looking for a boyfriend, nor that she will sleep with you after just one porn star martini? I'm just asking for a friend. <laughs> um, I recently joined Tinder this year for the first time. Um, and yeah, I know, I picked the worst app to try. Um, I didn't know what to write, so I just went for something really simple. I just said, nothing too serious, let's do something fun. <coughs> yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, suddenly I'm getting all the messages. Um, so this was my entire interaction with one guy. Hey, how's you? That was me. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously that was the guy. Hey, how's you? Uh, yeah, good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good. Want to come around and fuck? Like, Jesus. Like, I'm not looking for Bridgerton-style romance, but more than one sentence would be great. Um, I was talking to this other guy uh, late one night, um, and I worked out pretty quickly that his entire personality was marijuana. Um, like when he told me where he lived, um, when he told, sorry, when I told him where I lived, he was like, oh, bro, that's only a 10 minute Uber from where I live. Pull up, let's catch a vibe. I was like, bro, it's 11.30 p.m. on a Monday. I'm in my pajamas. Like I'm pretty sure if I jumped in an Uber to your house right now, it wouldn't be a vibe I'd be catching. <laughs> Like there's being spontaneous, there's going with the flow, and then there's just asking for gonorrhea. I <laughs> uh, took a little break from dating apps. I uh, thought I'd go down the route of kind of meeting someone in person. Um, the opportunity arose. Uh, my best friend's wedding, me, a professionally made up bridesmaid, and uh, him, a hot friend of the groom. Um, too much free champagne and Ed Sheeran's thinking out loud. And uh, it was like fate. It was written in the stars. Or we were just the only two single people at the wedding. And the mother of the bride spent the entire evening ushering us towards each other with all the subtlety of a cruise ship's foghorn. Um, it seemed like a really good idea at the time, but it actually just turned into a uh, walk of shame to remember. Um, like, it was like we tried to make an entrance the next morning, we're like sweeping down this grand staircase into a massive dining room where the entire wedding party was already seated having breakfast. Grandparents and all. Um, yeah, I couldn't look Grandma Gladys in the eyes as I took my seat at the table next to her and just tried to hide behind a croissant. I shouldn't have been worried though, she was pretty cool about it, asked me how big his dick was. <laughs> Go Gladys. Uh, no, but after that disaster, it was uh, straight back to Tinder. Um, the weirdest thing I found on there so far, I was talking to this really posh guy, and um, it was late one night, we were messaging, um, you know, uh, and he was like, yeah, yeah, so what turns you on? I was like, oh, you know, like just sex and the positions and lube and stuff, you know, what, uh, what, what turns you on? Um, he was like, yeah, yeah, um, I really like it when a girl can make me jealous. Okay, um, in what way? He's like, yeah, yeah, so One dong. Um, like if we're out and she's flirting with all my friends, or Two dongs. like if she texts me and tells me that she's on her way to sleep with another guy. Yeah. I just find the jealousy to be such a turn on. It's like, okay, um, I'm not really sure how to apply that to a sexting situation, but um, he was like, yeah, on that note, I, uh, I showed my flatmate your profile and uh, he thinks you're cute. It's like, okay, um, yeah, tell me about your flatmate. Sure, send a photo. 
yeah, he's really hot. Like, I don't know, am I doing this right? Is this working for you? Like, are you jealous? Three dogs. Unlucky Bev, what was, the, what was the time on that one, Lee? It was three minutes 55. Three minutes 55, so that's the, that's the furthest of anyone's got gone so far. Bev, uh, how long have you been doing comedy, Bev? Uh, four months. Four months, oh, so that's what I like. So you're doing something like, what, what I really like about you is you've got, uh, like, you've got a like, dialed in persona, mm -hmm. like that sort of nervous about sex and how like, it relates to your vibe is really nice. Uh, you've got that typical <laughs> thing that all <laughs> new acts have where they, you feel like, you feel like you're telling a joke rather than just talking to people. And that comes with time, and that's something you just get from being on stage more and more and more. Just keep going and keep doing that. But you've got a lot of potential to be really good. Uh, you know, you've been very dialed in on who you are as a performer. I really like that. But yeah, just you need to just loosen up with your delivery and how you talk to people. Uh, Kate, what do you think? Yeah, no, I agree. Four months in, that's nothing, yeah. right? So, And already you came on stage with like a lot of good confidence and everything. And I think it's like going over your material and just making sure that you're telling, you're finding every punchline you can get so you're not telling a story too long without putting a joke in there. You know what I mean? But four months in, you're great for four months in. Yeah, really good. Yeah, Junior? Well done. Uh, I agree with the other two judges. Uh, got a bit boring, I would say. <laughs> I'm going to be a bit harsh. Yeah, I can see the crowd. You got a bit bored, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Especially this guy. <laughs> but yeah, you, you have some good jokes, uh, some good punchlines. The thing about, um, I can tell his whole persona was marijuana. That was hilarious. Uh, so, but yeah, just be a bit more animated. Just be a bit more lively and be a bit more fun with the jokes you're telling. And yeah, you've got a lot of potential. Four, only four months in, but yeah. well done. Oh, and the uh, the joke with uh, where you did the guy's voice and then said that was me, that was really fucking funny. Uh, like, like subverting the audience expectation, that's really nice. Uh, yeah, really good. Keep going. Really awesome stuff. Really bad for Beth! <laughs> Goodbye, my lover. Goodbye, my friend. You have been the one. What a fucking banger that is. Guys, you want to do one more for the bucket? That is a banger. Yeah. Yeah, it is a fucking banger, right? Junior, you want to pick one out of the bucket? Not a psycho murderer. Not a psycho murderer. We got. We got. <laughs> got psycho murderer. No, I'm joking. <laughs> George Wheeler. George Wheeler. <laughs> Are we all doing everyone well? Yeah. Good. Um, I used to wank wrong. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> No, no, no one showed me how to do it. I'm one of the, the lucky ones. Um, <laughs> what I used to do, I used to grab my foreskin, right? And rotate it like that. <laughs> I know, it took fucking hours, right? I'll just be there for hours. It's the dirty windmill. That's what I called it, the dirty windmill, right? <laughs> so I was doing that for a few years. <laughs> and then one day I went to the football with my dad, right? And... Um, Re relax, relax. <laughs> so I was about the football and we won 6 1, right? We were excited about it. And the away fan coach drove past. So my dad saw him. He was like, Oh, Jules, look at this. Look. What a bunch of cunts say, I look. Wanker! <laughs> oh! <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, Wanker! It didn't have the same effect. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm now alone, I'm now alone. I'm, my girlfriend broke up me um, over the phone the other day. I was sad about it, you know, and I wanted to talk to someone about it. I was like, I'll talk to one of my friends. The problem with my friends is that they're, they're, sh they're thick, right? Like really, like I, I, was, I was outside my house in my neighbor, um, I was outside my house and I didn't have a key, right? And I'm with my mate, I'm like, oh sorry man, I ain't got a key. You mean, oh you're a fucking prick. He was like, don't worry, my neighbor's got one. It's like, yeah, but where the fuck do they live? Like, that's how stupid I'm dealing with, right? <laughs> like, high-octane fucking idiots. So I wanted to talk to someone about my breakups. So I was like, all right, I'll talk to my dad. The problem with my dad is that he's emotionally blunted, right? He just he doesn't deal with emotional things. So I was like, I'll have to ring him. So I rung him. He's like, all right, all right. He's got a cold. All right. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no, do you know what, Dad? I'm, I'm in a bit of a state, really. He's like, what's the matter? I'm like... I don't know what, my girlfriend, she's on the phone, she broke up with me, and it's just, everything's hit home, you know, I feel alone. I'm in this weird flat now with this weird guy who has a gun. And I'm sitting in my room, I'm alone. I don't know, comedy's not going well, I'm doing ding-dong shows. 
And I don't know what to do. I don't know what do I do to make myself happy? What do I do to make myself happy? You know? All oh, right. Right. And how's work? Like it weren't. <laughs> It weren't the emotional support I needed, you know. Uh, I've been getting a bit religious in, 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 that, in it, you know. I've been thinking about Jesus a lot. I don't like him, he's a melt, you know, I don't... <laughs> he's a bit of a prick, right? What did he do? What did he really do? Like, he was upstairs in heaven with his dad, playing Xbox or whatever. I don't know what he was doing. One dong. Christian. <laughs> And his dad sent him down to be with us. He's fucking always wandering around with long hair and flip flops like a fucking gap year student. <laughs> and he's just telling people how to live their lives, being a prick. And eventually the Romans get him like, nah, fuck this cunt. He crucified him. So he's just up there like, oh, I'm dying for your sins. I'm doing it for you. He's like, no one asked, but all right. <laughs> and then he died and went back to heaven with his dad. It's like when them people move to London and couldn't hack it, you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> the thing I don't get about Jesus, right, is that he was in a cave. Joe was like, he was in the cave. He was in there for three days. What the fuck was he doing for three? And I thought, well, if I'm Jesus, what would I be doing, you know? And it, I clocked it. He's got holes in his hands, isn't he? <laughs> Do you understand? That lady at the back don't understand. He's doing that. It's like a built in fleshlight. Do you know what's the worst bit? His dad's watching the whole time. I've got a moustache. Um, I look like a nonce. I know I look like a nonce. I've just done it to throw off everyone else, you know what I mean? I know I look shit. A lot of Freddie Mercury survived the AIDS. <laughs> they lost all his money in Bitcoin. I know it's shit. Um, yeah. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money sure. on my mind, I can never get it up. And every time I step up in the building, everybody... That was like, uh, I'm going to call the act Mario Masturbation. There was a lot going on there. That was, uh, that, was, that was great, man. Like, real strong stage persona. You know exactly who you are when you're on from the bit. Like, you started with wanking. You went back to wanking. I imagine you're going to go home and do that later as well. And, yeah. that, and, that, and that was great. But that was really great, man. Really strong. How long have you been doing this? Uh, four or five years. Four or five years, yeah. You're, you're strong. Like, um, so like, so what's, what's the goal for you with like, the job? Do you want to like, do this full time? Uh, well, I have a podcast, the House of Shame podcast. Just get a plug in. Good, to go for it, man. Take, take the plug, take the plug. Uh, I think George so, needs some merch as well. I think he needs T-shirts that say, Jesus is a melt. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if you subscribe to the podcast, we'll make the t-shirt yeah, the guy, to people. The, the guy that gonged, is, did, did you gong because you are religious? No, I just got a bit bored. You just got a bit bored? Well, I shouldn't have asked, actually. That's made it harder. Yeah. Uh, I, thought you, I thought you were great, George. George, uh, Junior, what do you think? George, yeah, amazing. Well done. Really funny. Jesus is a male. That's hilarious. So, uh, <laughs> that's a new one. Um, do you know that guy with the, the moustache as well, you two friends? We don't all know each other. Oh, no, same, I don't know. <laughs> I'm saying. I'm just, I'm just assuming maybe you do. Great moustaches, both of you. Um, great set. I was watching it as a fan. I forgot I was judging because he was really funny. I got no critiques. I don't remember your jokes. But I remember, <laughs> <laughs> but I remember laughing a lot. It was amazing. The Jesus is a melt thing. Because my friend, only white people say the word melt. Black people never say it. We don't know what it means. But I know it because I know a lot of white people. And my <laughs> white friends, they call me a melt when I do something soppy or stupid. Yeah. So it's, I've never seen a comedian say it either. So that was new. So well done, great set. I'm gonna, I might watch your podcast as well because you're really, really funny guy. What's it called? Uh, the House of Shame podcast. If you could, the House of Shame, House of Shame podcast because if you just do House of Shame, a, a Bee Gees song comes up. So okay. remember the podcast as well. No, Kate, well done. Do you well want to Kate, do you want to plug this podcast as well? While we're fucking, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm good on this fucking podcast. No, it was great. Yeah, it was great. You can tell you have like experience and you've been doing this for a while and yeah, you're strong you. and everything. There were a couple times where I was like, I wanted you to like get to the punchline yeah. a little faster. 
But like when you were coming back and when he put it up and you said Christian, like yeah. you can tell you've been going a while. So no, I thought it was yeah, I thought yeah, it was really yeah. Good. You handled the dong really well. You didn't go fuck off. Uh, it's, just yeah. a, it's a better move when yeah. someone does <laughs> does the go. But yeah, your next, your second finalist, and gentlemen, George Wheeler. <laughs> What do you think? Have we got time for one more for the bucket, do you think, before we do the last action of the section? Yeah. All right, one more. For, I'm going to pick this one. All right, who we got? We've got the wonderful... Who the fuck is it? Emre Kose! <laughs> That's how I... Would so I've also got a moustache. <laughs> what are the odds? Uh, how's everyone doing? You all right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so my girlfriend asked me why I decided to do this gig. And I said, uh, I don't know, I guess I've got funny bones. She said, uh, having a small dick doesn't count. So she said, uh, what, you're doing it for the attention? And I said, no, that's what the mustache is for. <laughs> yeah, uh, but don't worry guys, honestly, the joke's on her because she doesn't even exist. <laughs> uh, yeah, has everyone had a good week? You had a good week? Okay. <laughs> uh, I had a good week. Uh, I met John Cena this week. Yeah, give me, a, give me a cheer if you're familiar with the works of John Cena. Yeah, for those of you who aren't, just uh, ask yourselves, uh, what if steroids had a face? Um, yeah, so, I mean, he's American, essentially. Um, and uh, basically, I met him in this restaurant. And whenever I meet anyone who's not English, I become the most British person in the whole world. So uh, I heard myself call WWE wrestler and Hollywood actor John Cena old chap yeah so uh, i went up to him and i said oh you're right old chap um i'm a really big fan of your work is there any chance i could get a photo and uh, he said there's a great chance of that and uh, i shook his hand and i've never felt so safe <laughs> i think that's what love is um so yeah my name's uh, my name's emre i'm uh, half irish and half turkish which uh, basically means i've got an irish passport but uh, I look like I know my way around a kebab. So. Yeah, my name means uh, friend in Turkish. I thought it was quite sweet, so I asked my dad, I was like, Dad, why would you name me friend? And uh, he said, uh, well, son, the Turkish word for all right once you get to know him was a bit too long. <laughs> so I said, uh, Dad, why are you talking like that? You're from Dublin. Um, no, but I thought I'd get him back. I said, uh, all right then, Dad, what's the Turkish word for dickhead? And he said, that's your middle name. So. <laughs> He wins again. Uh, yeah. My dad's actually uh, not talking to me at the minute. Um, yeah, he's, uh, he's not angry at me or anything. We just said good morning at the same time and I jinxed him. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. Shannon is... Hello. Yeah, I'm a teacher as well. Uh, yeah, no, I thought I thought uh, stand-up. You know, I teach drama, basically. And, uh, you know, some annoying thing about teaching drama is that a lot of people say that drama teachers are just failed actors. And uh, I don't think that's very fair. I also sing, so, yeah. Um, but that's the thing, like, it's eventful. Like, I don't know what your work weeks have been like, but on Thursday, I spent the first 20 minutes of my day consoling a boy in year eight because he licked the floor, and uh, he was upset because it didn't taste as good as last time. Yeah, um, it's, uh, yeah it's eventful. Like, one of the first lessons I taught, um, I said, you're gonna do a scene today. It can be about anything that you want. And this kid turns to his mate, and he goes, psst, Jamal. We're gonna do a horror, and it's about your hairline. <laughs> I mean, I laughed, but obviously you know, not too loudly because I didn't want to get roasted next. You know what I mean? I didn't. I didn't need that on a Tuesday. Um, I got heckled as well. I got heckled in a Year Seven lesson. I said, "You're gonna do some mime today," and this kid just shouts out from the back, "Fuck that!" <laughs> Guess what I did? Nothing. <laughs> what was I gonna say? Like, what, what did I want to say? I wanted to say "Fuck you, Gerald," but. You know, he's 12, so I didn't. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. Like, um, I mean, I want to tell him to be responsible, um, but you know, I, I was feeling a bit rejected. I, uh, I, I failed my driving test this week. Um, yeah, so, because I turned up to the wrong test center. On the plus side, it turns out- One dong, a... two dongs, three dongs, four dongs. <laughs> oh, that's, that that that's a lot of dongs that one. That was... What is it about driving tests that fucks you guys off so much, sir? It wasn't even like on a punchline. He just mentioned driving tests. One, two, three, four. Fucking. 
Uh, em- Emre, Emre, like, how, how long you do, how long you been going, Emre? Uh, about five months. Uh, five months. Well, I like it. You, you were very confident in your delivery. You came on like you, like you looked comfortable on stage. I don't think the material is quite caught up yet. Sure, yeah. Like the jokes, like you've not gone deep enough into the topics you're talking about. Cool. But like, the, like the confidence is there, and everything else can be built upon after that. Uh, again, another moustache. Uh, it was, it was unfortunate we ended up with two moustache acts in a row. Uh, but if you are going to make that choice for your life, that's up to you, Emre. We can't help you with that. Uh, but like a lot of potential in what you do. I thought you were very unfortunate to get gonged off. I still don't know what the fuck happened here. It came a little bit out of nowhere. Um, like the fact they all went at the same time as well, as if there was like a confirmation bias thing going on. Um, but I, I think you got a lot of potential to be good. I think that was unfortunate. Um, Kate, what do you think? Yeah, uh, you're super new at this, but you have good confidence. I, I agree. I think the material needs to go a little bit more. Mm. There was a couple times I thought you were going to a punchline and then you switched the joke. Right, right. Um, so I think some of the premises you had were good, but you didn't actually go into them far enough. And as like a teacher who teaches drama and you're around fucked up kids all day, there's loads of material in there, I'm yeah. sure. And also watch out, because some of the jokes you've done, I've heard them before from other comics. Right. So like the one where you imitated your dad and you're like, and that was, and he's the Irish one. Yeah. That yeah. joke I've heard like multiple yeah. times before. Yeah. So yeah. I just watch a couple of those like really easy ones that you're cool. not, I mean, I, I'm not uh, saying anything like, but that just happens. Sometimes when there's kind of obvious punchlines, a lot of comics will make that same joke because it's, it's easy, but go a little bit deeper. And I'm sure with like your background and your family and your job and your teaching and everything, like you'll you'll totally get there for sure. Yeah, Thank you. Junior, what do you Yeah, mean? I agree with the other two judges. That your material, your confidence is really great, but your material wasn't at the level of your confidence. So sure, sure, work yeah. on the jokes, better punchlines. And yeah, you, you've got the confidence already, you've got the stage presence, but your material is not strong enough to get you far in the comedy world. <laughs> that sounds a bit harsh, but, um, but yeah. yeah. If but you get you far, get... you too could be sitting at this desk. <laughs> <Yeah>. on a... <laughs> so, yeah, you know. <laughs> no, I've, I've done bigger shows than this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like the, <laughs> I'm just free tonight, that's why I'm here. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah, very good confidence. If you're a teacher, and teachers naturally have good confidence. I've met guys like you when I was a student. Mm. I've met <laughs> 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 I mean, my teachers, but they've said very similar to you, very confident, but not funny. Um, <laughs> no, so, <laughs> that came up wrong again. But yeah, just get better jokes. What I'm trying to say is get better jokes and you'll, got, you'll do better. Cool. Yeah. Emery Cozy, ladies and gentlemen! And his name is John C. <laughs> All right. We are down to your last act of this section, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Louis McLean! <laughs> All right, just like to address something before this goes any further. Because I can see a lot of you out there wondering where on earth are that man's eyebrows? <laughs> you people should be worrying about your own eyebrows, mate, yeah? Thieves operate in this area. <laughs> well, jokes aside, if anyone does see him lying about, if you could just scoop him up for me. Pop up the hospital after this, see if I can get him reattached. I think the biggest issue that I've faced with not having eyebrows is on the occasions when I've received some shocking news. <laughs> Everybody enjoyed a Queen's funeral? Still on the iPlayer if you fancy re-watching it. Couldn't get my head around the people queuing for that coffin. How do you even know she's in there? we are better off putting some money with her face on it in a shoebox and then walking past that. So I'm 32 now, which in ginger years is a surprise. <laughs> Still upsets me now to see a little ginger kid. That is the end of that sentence. <laughs> Quite a lot to contend with growing up as a ginger, you know, you've got the piss taking, the sun, Ed Sheeran, when I was younger, I used to have a little pre-planned response for when any piss-taking would happen. I remember once hearing, you should have been drowned at birth, you ginger twat. So I said, I can afford hair dye. Can you afford plastic surgery? And my mum said, yes. <laughs> well, I now understand to be yet another attempt on my life. When I was younger, my parents decided we would be moving to Spain. 
And only assuming the hope that I would finally boil to death. <laughs> Could all go about living in some sort of brunette utopia. My dad's a black cab driver. Well, he's not black, obviously. <laughs> no need to point that out, really. But he's a cab driver. He's been a cab driver so long now, he can only talk to you if he's facing forward. <laughs> I've never seen the man. <laughs> Got a cat recently. Mainly because it was free. I used to hate cats. I thought they were horrible, sneaky fuckers. And then you get one, and you find out, yes, exactly what they are. But they're your horrible sneaky fucker. Which is how I imagine the Tories feel about Rishi Sunak. <laughs> but I have grown to love him, uh, the cat, not Rishi Sunak. <laughs> Although I have noticed they both really enjoy licking their own assholes. So. <laughs> We're trying to do things to impress my cat, and as far as I can tell, she could not care less. Practice stand up on her. She's like a fucking cat, mate. And one enormous eyebrow. I can't relate to that. <laughs> really don't like talking on the phone. I think unless you've kidnapped a member of my family, there's no reason to ring me. And even then, a text will do. <laughs> Should add some emojis, keep it light, you know. <laughs> Quite a lazy person. Give you an example of how lazy I am. If I see that the washing machine's done, I just turn it on again. I'm trying to get a little bit better this year. Um, I drove past the gym earlier, so... Who knows where that might lead. <laughs> gym that I joined six months ago. I say joined, it's more a monthly donation I now make to Virgin Active. <laughs> Thinking about popping down there soon, see where the money's going. <laughs> Went to a yoga class recently. Turned out to be a terrible mistake. Class went on longer than expected, and when I told the teacher that, he responded with no hint of irony. I'm a yoga teacher. I don't believe in the concept of time. <laughs> That's very handy, mate. I don't believe in the concept of paying idiots. That's what I should have said. I said I just went, yeah, me neither, mate. I don't know why I brought it up, to be honest. <laughs> Anything I like doing down the gym is just sitting in the steam room. I have to be a bit careful, keep getting caught in there. If I want to leave the steam room and someone's coming in, I can't then go. So I don't want them to think I'm leaving because I hate them. <laughs> Three times I've passed out this week. <laughs> Recently got onto social media after trying to avoid it for quite a while. Getting used to the terminal. Yeah! I fucking, hey. I fucking love that, man. That was this is exactly what we've been saying all night. You came on with a very strong persona with material that suited that persona. And you kept it up throughout. The ginger stuff off the top was really good. The the the, the queen stuff after didn't quite land. And I think like if you'd done that in the, the other order, you might have got gonged up after a minute. But the ginger stuff really worked, and everything after that was great. Uh, yeah, really nice. How long have you been going? Uh, since March. Since March, that's oh, really, wow. you're really strong. You've got yeah. a really good view of what you are, and your, your writing will only just get tighter and tighter. And you just keep, you don't have to change a lot about what you are because it's so deadpan and it's so, like, the audience know exactly what you are as soon as you come on. I really like that. What did you think, Kate? Yeah, no, same. I love the deadpan. I like how you deliver it just straight up. Stuff like the, the Richard Sunak joke was good, but the Queen stuff was not. It's, yep. it's topical shit when you're new is yeah, hard to do. Because also, like, everyone has made fucking jokes about that. Twitter already has, like, a thousand million jokes about that shit. So, I, but but what you're doing is really good, and that all that all the stuff you're doing. So yeah, I think it's just like over time you'll tighten it up. And but I really like the deadpan stuff. And you came up there with just like a good confidence and delivered, and a lot of your jokes are really fucking funny. Cool, Junior. Kind of remind me of Liam Gallagher. Um, <laughs> the, the energy, like you don't give a fuck, but you know you're good. Um, he was really good. Um, he, he seemed like he did it for a while. But normally new comedians are happy; they want to be. Happy. <laughs> 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 you're like, yeah. Oh, you're giving it a <laughs> 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 you don't give a fuck no more if they like you or not. Um, but yeah, well done. Yeah. Uh, what? Do you have eyebrows? Uh, I can't. I can't. No, you don't. Okay, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, <laughs> what are you no, gonna do? Yeah. Sell him eyebrows? Yeah. I've got. I've got, I got links. Uh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, the ginger stuff was hilarious. Um, I fucking hate gingers. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. 
But no, yeah, the ginger stuff was amazing. Because you're ginger, you can do them kind of jokes. I couldn't say that kind of stuff, but you can. Well done. The black cap stuff, if obviously that's not black as well. Because I'm black, I can't relate to that. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't have a dad. So... <laughs> But, um, but no, amazing, really funny. Well, what's your name again? Louis. Louis, well done, Louis. Is it McLean or McLean? McLean. McLean, sorry, cool, I got it right the first time. Uh, cool, so, ladies and gentlemen, Louis McLean! <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's uh, the first half of the show done. Let's wait for the three finalists we've got for the half. You've got Amy Malouf, <laughs> George Wheeler, and Louis McLean. Uh, we're going to have a 10 15 minute break. We'll be back for your second half of the show. See you in a bit. Are you ready for the second half of the Ding Dong Gong Show? Yeah. Please welcome back to the stage your host, Mark Cram. Yeah. Welcome back to part two. Yeah. Give me a cheer if you had a good night so far. Yeah. That's what I like to fucking hear. Let's meet some more people. So we met you, you were a judge in the first half. Who you, what was your name, mate? Ryan. Ryan. Who are you here with, Ryan? Raz. Raz. Ryan and Raz. How do you know each other? Your cousins? Well, one of you is bigger than the other one. Uh, Raz, tell me about you, mate. What do you do? I live in Wisconsin. You live in Wisconsin? That's what you do, is it? Uh, are you also from Wisconsin? Yeah. Yeah, but I'm very excited about it. Uh, different levels of energy from these Wisconsin people. So, like, whereabouts in Wisconsin are you from? You wouldn't know. He's from the farm. The farm? Uh, like, Green, Green Bay? No, I don't know any other places in Wisconsin, mate. Just name the place. Coon Valley. Coon Valley? Okay, that's something, that's something we can't say in this country. Uh, wow, Americans really are way more racist than the British. Uh, whereabouts in Wisconsin are you from? Oh, well, you're, I thought you said you... No, I didn't cheer you. Who, who cheered? I did. Oh, you're over there. But, oh, you caught my eye, man. It's weird. Uh, whereabouts in Wisconsin are you from? Way up north, Phillips. Phillips? No. He doesn't even fucking know, and he's from Wisconsin. <laughs> What's your name, uh, Phillips? Trinity. Tr Trinity? You really are American, aren't you? <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Trinity, when you're not stripping, what's your... Uh, I'm, uh, I'm an actor. You're an actor. So, so stripping. Uh, <laughs> what sort of acting do you do, Trinity? Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Well, what, what are you in at the moment? Um, I'm studying at the Globe currently. You're studying at the Globe? Wow. Have you got a favourite Shakespeare play? Much Ado About Nothing. Much Ado About Nothing. Which character would you like to be? Beatrice, does anyone know who that is? No, it's not the crowd for Shakespeare. Not gonna lie. Um, have you been in anything? Have you, is it just Shakespeare? Do you do do you do TV or anything like that? Uh, mostly stage. Mostly stage. Uh, who are you here with tonight, Trinity? Victor. Victor, Victor, are you also an actor? No, I'm an engineer. <laughs> and so depressed about it. Uh, <laughs> he's better, he's more loser than Victor. Uh, good. Uh, that was a great joke, guys. Don't worry about it. Uh, Victor, Victor. So you you're an engineer. What do you engineer? Currently working with satellites. <laughs> is that satellites, is it? It was, <laughs> it was what? So there was irony. Oh, I see. It, <laughs> Landed, good. Uh, so, Victor, so you work in satellites. Victor, but your accent, where are you at? Where are you from? Spain. Spain, you don't sound very Spanish. I, I was thinking more like Russian. I was slightly terrified. Uh, <laughs> Russian satellites, we all know. Any Russians in? <laughs> Good. Uh, <laughs> any other Spanish people in? Hello. Just you, Victor. Whereabouts in Spain are you from? Yeah, Madrid. Madrid. Oh, good part of Madrid? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, so Victor, Victor. Would you like to be a judge in this half, Victor? Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Wow. Uh, the level of infusion. Why about it? Trinity, would you like to be a judge? Hell yeah. Yeah, we'll go. Yeah, we'll go. <laughs> Kate's giving you big black dick straight away. There's been no. Like, Can you hand that big black dick back to Kate for me? <laughs> You have, so this woman's like, no, I'm not touching it. Right, so, we need more than we need another. Anyone else up for me? Disgusting! Anyone else up for another girl with a hand up? What's your name there? Rachel. Rachel? Yeah. Rachel, tell me about you, Rachel. What do you, wait a minute, you're next to him, and I'm worried about that. No, no, you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. Are you together? Fuck no. No. Uh, no, I'm gay. I mean, not in a bad way, I'm gay. To be honest, mate, you're just a horrible man. Uh, so, what's your name? Rachel. Rachel, what do you do, Rachel? I'm you're a student, what sort of studying do you do? I study pharmacology. You study pharmacology? And what makes you think you'd be a good judge, Rachel? Because I'm good at judging. You're good at judging? <laughs> you can't argue with that logic, guys. It's uh, begging us. Well. What do we think, crowd? Do we think Rachel will make a good judge? Yeah. Who's opposed to Rachel as a judge? Yeah. Why are you opposed to Rachel? <laughs> 
Why not? You know what? I feel like I'll make you a judge just for that. <laughs> See you later, Ray. Ray. We're going to make Rachel a judge. Rachel, what, what, what dildo do you want? Do you want balls? Uh, I'd like balls. Do you, Rachel, I want like balls. <laughs> Can you hand the balls back to Rachel, please? Apparently I've been told not to throw the dildos anymore. Right. Who would like the small red dildo? Wow. Uh, anyway. If I change it to the big double-ended one, does someone want it? Right, who wants the big double-ended one? Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> who was that enthusiastically wanted to say? We've got, we've got the man right about, what's your name there, mate? Reuben. Reuben, Reuben. Like, I don't know about all these judges who are too close together. Yeah, Reuben. That's what I was thinking. Anyone over this side of the room want to be a judge? Yeah. I'll, say, well, I'll tell you what, you were fucking, you were fucking, we're just going to give that to, what's your name? <laughs> Maria, you were fucking great, you can take the double-ended straight away. Right, there we go. Right, we have one more to give out, guys. That's someone from Preferably over this side. Anybody want a dildo? One woman there. Small guys need loving too. Small guys need loving too. I don't need any more information than that. There you fucking go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that made honestly, that made it sound like I've got a really small dick and I uh, I didn't need to hit her. Right, you ready for your fight? We're going to go to the first act of this section. Are we ready for this, guys? Yeah. Can we get some clapping and cheering going? This side cheer now. This side cheer louder. You guys cheer on your own. How do you fit into this group, mate? You know, you've wandered into the wrong. Uh, not to make it racial profiling, but fucking hell. Uh, you look like you're in an indie band that's just playing with someone doing a rap record. Could say, um, anyways, <laughs> your next act is your next act is called Serena Smart on the count of three. We're gonna go crazy welcome to the stage. One, two, three, go crazy, please welcome Serena Smart! <laughs> Hello everyone, um, I'm Serena Smart. When people hear my name, they usually say that I sound like one of two things. Um, a stripper or a character from an Enid Blyton novel. And to that I say, why not both, you know? Like, it's 2022, why don't we have, I don't know, the famous five take on the cost of living crisis? Like, say what you will about sex work, but I'm not turning anything down in this economy. Uh, so I started a new job recently, unrelated, and I'm not sure how I feel about it right, because it's my first ever, like, corporate job, um, and I'm worried that it's turning me a bit, like, too corporate. Like, just yesterday, I was on the phone to my mum, and she says that I've really changed the way that I speak, which, fair enough, I did tell her that I'd circle back to her texts on Tuesday, but it is a bit rich, coming from the self-same woman that once asked me if I wanted to go for a drink at Al Baroni, and when I asked her where she meant, she pointed across the road to, I shit you not, an all-bar one. <laughs> It's like, Mum, we're in Voxel, all right, not the Amalfi fucking coast. But I mean, now um, I'm so corporate that the only way I can come is um, if I'm listening to the theme tune from Succession. And like to get myself off, yeah, bit of a think of that one. Uh, to get myself off, instead of porn, I just watch like compilation videos of um, Andrew Tate and Jordan Peterson talking about crypto, <laughs> which has the added benefit that I'm fucked both by the patriarchy and my dildo. I mean. <laughs> I say dildo, it's just a rolled up copy of the FT. Um, no, One sorry, dog. if you have a copy of the FT, though, I will take that. But um, yeah, like some people know Adam Smith as the father of modern economics. Um, I just call him daddy. Um, but yeah, um, a bit else about me. Uh, I'm recently single, um, if your definition of recent includes the last three years. Um, <laughs> Yeah, my ex and I broke up because we weren't seeing eye to eye, because, you know, I'm five foot two, on an incline, and um, he was a massive cunt. Um, <laughs> my pet name for him was actually Pistachio, because I had to put in so much effort to get anything nice out of him. Um, and he always used to nut in my mouth. But um, <laughs> I'm joking. His aim was terrible. Um, <laughs> But I've been trying to get myself back out there now. I've been getting myself on all the dating apps. Um, my favourite dating app, I don't know if you guys would have heard of it. Um, it's called LinkedIn. It's, it's pretty underground. Um, but yeah, I find dating quite hard, right? Because I've never really understood the way guys flirt. Like, just today, I went on a run, brag, and this guy shouted at me, you got big tits, which, I mean, you can't fault his eyesight, but... It's a bit of a weird thing to say to someone, isn't it? Like, at that point, it's less of a catcall and just more of, like, an audio-descriptive prompt. I guess he's champion accessibility at the end of the day. A good deed is still a good deed, to be fair to him. Do you guys want to know the weirdest catcall I ever got? Yeah. Yeah. Cool, not really a panto crime, but you tried. Um, 7th of February 2021, I remember it well. Because I was walking down the road, and I was wearing these, like, baggy tracksuits and a big, oversized jumper, um, and... Three dogs. Uh. <laughs> 
I want to hear the worst cat call she's ever got. Yeah, what was the worst? Yeah. Tell, tell us the worst cat call you got. Yeah, yeah I want to hear. Slag. Slag. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first act, whole act. So that's cool. Um, uh, that, that so might have been me. That might have been you. Yeah. Uh, so, Serena, how long have you been going, Serena? Uh, like about a year now. About a year, so like you're still fairly new. Like, I'm going to give you the opposite advice to what I would ever give new acts normally. Do more filth. Because like when you did the filthier stuff, you got bigger laughs off it. I think it's because you're quite an innocent sounding person. That, that and especially uh, like so when you did the filth, it was like a nice juxtaposition, and the crowd really went for that. Uh, you were already like uh, like the first two dongs went before you'd started doing that. I don't think you would have got them if that had happened. Um, yeah, I think you just you you like you're very new. You just need more and more stage time and just keep going with it. Uh, but yeah, like the ju like more filth would be a good juxtaposition for you. I think anyway, uh, Kate. Yeah, no, I mean, just, uh, I don't even know what to say here. Like, it's good, I just, yeah, you need to work on it a little bit. A couple of the jokes you said, like, about the dating app LinkedIn. Again, I heard that one yeah. a few times before. But you did have some good bits in there. Um, yeah, it's just, like, more and more stage time. But you have a good confidence about you on stage, so... It, it's gonna take more stage time. That's all. Yeah, and when, and when Kate says about these bits that have been done before, it's not it's not a negative. It's just a, it's just a, it's, a, it's a like um, just a way of people think. Like there are acts that do like clubs every week and that do that joke. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's like well, lean into whatever is. I just tell everyone lean into whatever makes you unique because then it's gonna be completely your voice and you're gonna have the best luck with that. And people will start relating to you. The joke about you being five two and then him being a massive cunt like that's a great joke. That one probably would be a good opener joke, actually, because it's a quick hit off the top, and you can go into your other material, too. Yeah, that's right. Thanks. With the film, I would have yeah, started with that, yeah. I agree with what Kate said about, because your first couple jokes were a bit too smart, but I got it. <laughs> I actually no, didn't no, get it. I, the audience. I, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to admit, I fucking didn't get it. I didn't know who that author was. It yeah. went over my head. I didn't fucking yeah. know who it was. So I was like, OK, I didn't so, know. Yeah, Eden Blyton's like a really British author. It's oh, like, okay. yeah, yeah. I know. Um, but yeah. <laughs> The filth, what you said, the filthy stuff, because you're quite a nice, smiley young woman, so you don't expect the That's filth. the nicest cat call I've ever got. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the filth was a nice surprise. It's always nice when women are dirty. When you don't, I mean, <laughs> no, no, sorry, let me finish. When you don't expect it, when you don't expect them to be dirty, when they get dirty, so it's always funny when they do that. Or when they, they that sounds sexy as fucking now, Junior. Um, <laughs> When, when comedians do that, when it's a surprise. So that was really funny. And um, yeah, to start off with more basic jokes everyone can get, and then you can like go yeah. into your more smart jokes. Yeah. But I've got the smart stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so as a crowd, give me a show. Who knows who Enid Blyton is? Yeah. Give me a show if you don't know who Enid Blyton is. Yeah. That's, that's the problem with that joke. Uh, <laughs> but that was the great. I think you've got a good persona. You go far, just keep working hard. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Serena Smart. <laughs> Okay. You guys want one from the bucket? Yeah. Okay, why don't you pull one from the bucket? What right, we got? Uh, we have got Finn Jacob. Hello. Moving to London, haiku, number 154. I'm suffocating. <laughs> Everywhere I go, you're there. Leave me alone, Pret. <laughs> Uh, I, lo I love being down here. I'm actually from a, a town, a very rural town in the northwest called Cockermouth. <laughs> uh, known by the locals as Nobbergob. Uh, it's very exciting. No, it's a really small town. It's got about like 100 houses, maybe. It, it's, a, it's the sort of place where, you know, uh, your sister can also be like a sylph. Do you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> But no, I, I, I love being down here. It's such a fun and cultural Wonder. city. Uh, but that got me thinking, like, why do we give our city a cultural award to cities like Hull? You know? Although, do you want to hear an interesting fact about Hull? Yeah. Me too. <laughs> uh, it is expensive down here, though. I've been uh, struggling to pay for stuff recently. 
so I've had to pick up a side hustle. Uh, naturally, being middle class, uh, my side hustle is visiting my grandparents. <laughs> and like, it's, it's a nice chunk of change, but I started thinking, if I really take this side hustle seriously, you know, and take it all the way, I reckon I could get a house deposit. <laughs> so I started visiting my grandparents whilst testing positive with COVID. <laughs> and like, it's long hours and you gotta work weekends, but <laughs> I'm feeling good. Now I have the winter on my side. <laughs> um, I do like to go and see them, no, uh, I, I, don't, I don't try and kill them all the time. Um, I actually like to go up uh, and I like to recite for them poems that I've, I've written for them. So if you wouldn't mind tonight, I would love to um, perform a poem that I wrote for my dear Gran. <laughs> Days without you won't be so sunny. But get in the ground and give me your money. <laughs> you taught me my A, B, C's. But now please, C's to B, A, life. <laughs> it's clever that bit, isn't it? <laughs> I truly wish I could be sadder, but this is my only hope of getting on the property ladder. <laughs> uh, that was called, I'd hate to see you go but I would love to watch you leave. <laughs> uh, I've, been, I've been thinking a lot about aliens recently. Uh, did you know it's somebody's full-time job to send out and try and receive messages from aliens? Like, does no one else think that's a terrible idea? No? Like, what would you do if you met an alien tonight? What would you say? Hi. That's exactly why it's a terrible idea. <laughs> Uh, I think the most famous example of trying to communicate with them was the Golden Record. Do we know what that is? Yeah, yeah basically, right, I'll keep this tight because this is boring as fuck. So I don't want to send a history lesson. Right, Voyager Space Probe, we attached a record. It had loads of information on it. It had the exact precise directions of how to get to Earth and the galaxy. It said uh, over 100 messages in 100 different languages. And it also had attached to it pictures of us in our full anatomy. And we sent this out to try and communicate with aliens. So we sent a bunch of random messages, a location, and some nudes. <laughs> like, that wasn't a space probe. That was the world's most elaborate you up text. <laughs> now, I feel like in my experience, the aliens are now going to ghost us and tell the rest of the galaxy that we're a needy man whore. <laughs> but um, it, it got me thinking, though, what would I do if I met the aliens? And that led to this poem. <laughs> I, need to, I need to preface this, right, with, I was stoned when I read this, or wrote it, in fact. That's just really important. Please don't judge me too much. It's called Conversations with an Alien. <laughs> All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go up. That was fucking great, Finn. Well done, man. I've seen Finn down here before. Finn, you beat, I think you've beat the gong every time I've seen you down here. You've been fucking... That was fucking great. Uh, I don't know about starting with the haiku. That was an option. Uh, but like, the, 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 the Nan stuff was so funny, man. Everyone really loved that. Uh, I loved the cut off of the gong coming on just before you could do the last poem. Because every time you started a poem, that girl checked her watch, and I found that really funny. Uh, <laughs> she was like, I like comedy. Another fucking poem, really? Uh, but... Finn, you got a really strong persona. I, I, I don't think you were doing poems last time, so that's a nice, nice detail to add to the act, so something a little bit different. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. There's not a lot I really can say. Just keep, keep, keep plugging away, man. That's great. Yeah, yeah, stuff about your grandma and dying and everything like that. The side, calling it a side hustle, I think you could build that even more. So like the, the punchline comes in even harder that it is visiting your grandparents. Um, but I thought it was great. And totally different si like persona than, than everyone else had on stage, right? With the poems and even talking about the golden record. I didn't fucking know that. That was cool. Um, I'm not smart enough to get all these things. Junior probably already fucking knew what that was, but... I've heard of the golden record. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know it in detail, but yeah. As long as you have no follow-up questions. <laughs> <laughs>
I thought there was music on the record. Wasn't it music on the record? Didn't we send a there record? Was music. There was yeah, you didn't make shit. Yeah, was the music on it as well? There's like the Beatles or something. No, it was uh, it was um, Beatles. They did uh, some one classical song. As well. This is not important. Yeah, it's <laughs> boring. Yeah, it's English stuff. Um, well done, visiting grandmas. I do that as well. Other people's grandmas, not my own. <laughs> I make more money doing it that way. It gets quite sexual. Um, <laughs> But yeah, well done, Finn. Finn? Yeah. Finn? Well yes. done. You've been there before, so they know you. I don't know you, but you was really funny. I love the poem, the haiku. It's been a while since I've seen a comedian do a haiku on stage. I was counting the... Oh, the genuinely syllables. true. We were both sitting yeah, there going... Because you, <laughs> <the syllables, laughs> like you would have got disqualified if you went over the limit. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't have that here. Um, but yeah, I can't criticise you in any way because you're taller than me. Uh, <laughs> I'm quite intimidated by that. But uh, well done. I hope you go very far in your career. Well done. Cool. Through to the final, Finn Jacob! <laughs> right, the next one from the list, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tim Bigelow! Well, cool. With the first off, we had the two guys with the moustache going after each other, and now we've got the two really handsome guys. <laughs> uh, I start off by uh, talking about looking familiar. Like, I know I might look familiar to some people here today. Like, I know I look like that guy that helped you climb over the fence to get you into the music festival for free. <laughs> like, there is like, a positive thing to having a bone structure like a garden gnome, and that is a young garden gnome. And that is that I don't really have to worry too much about a pension plan, because I know I've got a cushy gig standing in a nice suburban garden when I'm retired, just next to the pond with my fishing rod like that. <laughs> I'm counting down the days, man. But yeah, I've just um, fallen for the latest craze, right? I have. I've done it again. I mean, you would have thought after me joining seven cults and three religions, I would have learned my lesson by now. <laughs> But with the latest craze that I've fallen for, like I've bought and I live on a canal boat. Like, yeah, I'm one of those people. How's your housing crisis going? Like, yes, it's good, man. Uh, yeah, let's just get a gauge, though, uh, here, Voxel. I'll find out now. Um, who, is the, um, who is the alpha male in the room here today? Yeah, it's me, because I'm the captain of my own vessel. Because <laughs> you thought this was your moment, didn't you, big man? It's been de alphaed by a goblin, mate. Okay, it's not. <laughs> not really a time. It's, it's quite a good thing about on on living on a canal boat, right? We do have a very strict rule, but you, you can travel no faster than four miles an hour, right? That is all we're allowed to do, because I love to travel at the speed that my life is progressing at, right? It's amazing. Like, I promise you, there's nothing more bizarre than having someone angrily shout at you because they're accusing you of traveling six miles an hour. <laughs> Shouting at me like we've got some special thing where I've, if I get three more points, I'm going to be doing a canal Wonder. awareness, speed awareness course or some shit. Um, yes, but you'd think with me being a captain and an alpha male and stuff that I would know what I'm doing when it comes to boats. Like, I don't. I haven't got any clue. Like, my mates always want to come and stay Two on dogs. board as well. Like, you get really excited. They think it's a party. They're like, oh, my God, Tim. I've just bought four cans of Relentless and two tabs of LSD, mate. We are going to have a fat night. I'm like, nah, man, you don't understand. This is survival mode right now. Okay, like, if this boat starts sinking and taking on water throughout the night, my go-to item to fill up that hole is blue tack. In fact, I'll be standing there last resort just saying, Alexa, just play Dido White Flag karaoke version, please. In fact, whilst we're going down past one of those tabs, right, I might as well make it a multicoloured flag whilst I'm losing my fucking possessions. Three dongs. Another one bites the dust. I love the way you, you nodded in acceptance of the dog. You're like, yeah, yeah that's about why. Um, <laughs> like, um, Tim, what I'll say positively about that is of any act on tonight, I think you you very you. Like, you're doing jokes about your life and uh, how, how you look and how you are and the opening about talking about you being as handsome as Finn. Uh, which clearly you are, by the way. Don't put yourself down. Uh, Finn is gorgeous, obviously, but so are you, Tim. Uh, and that's good. Um, but like, I think you started off really strong. I think you got maybe too into the detail on canal boats, yeah. which is not yeah. feedback I ever thought I'd have to give a comedian. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but again, there's potentially you're like really good. I think the gongs were actually a little bit harsh um, uh, in comparison to some of the other stuff we've seen tonight. So I think 
I, I think yeah, I think there's potentially something really good. Just lean into more of who you are and keep writing and keep writing because I think you, you've got a good persona. You you know what you're writing about. Just keep doing that. Maybe less about canal boats, but generally just keep being you, man. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think of anyone we've seen tonight. You sort of seem to be the most authentic. Like this is who I am, straight up. And you came out really, really strong, and then you kind of veered off of it. Maybe the canal boats, because I found myself kind of like wandering off and thinking about other shit too. But it, it was really good at the at the very top. So more of that kind of stuff. But. Yeah, I, I like that. When you call yourself a goblin, I feel like that too. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about Rosie and Jim a lot. Because <laughs> canal boats, Rosie and Jim. But yeah, kind of, when you, yeah, the canal boat stuff. Too much canal boat stuff. Too much. No one cares about, obviously you do, but no one else gives a fuck. But like one or two canal, jo canal boat jokes and then move on to some dick jokes or something. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, but you was I think it was very funny, just too much canal boat stuff. But yeah, awesome. well done. I love how much you undercut our advice. It was like, yeah, do dick jokes, man. That's what everyone wants. <laughs> Fuck who you are, dick jokes. <laughs> no. uh, but unlucky Tim, I've got them. Tim Bigelow! That don't impress me much. So you got the brain. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go back to the list again. Please welcome Usman S. How's everyone doing? Everyone doing good? Yeah. Okay. Give me a cheer if you're in a relationship. Woo! All right. Give me a cheer if you're single. Woo! Okay. Give me a cheer if you have clinical depression. Woo! Okay. You guys have no idea how happy I am to hear that. Um, I was recently put on SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So if you don't know what that means, uh, congrats on being happy. Um, uh, yeah. Apparently, it's a mental health awareness month. You guys are about to be very aware of my mental health. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm Muslim, but, you know, technically Muslim in the same way McDonald's are technically food. Um, like, I do hold the holidays, but none of the morals. You know what I mean? Um, I do certain things differently to you guys. I eat a certain type of food. You guys can kind of eat anything. I fast once a month every year. You guys don't really do that. I'm going to heaven. You guys, I don't think that's happening <laughs> for you. Uh, but, you know, there are certain things that you can do that I can't do. Like, um, like having a portable charger. I can't really do that. Doesn't look good when there's a red wire sticking out of my jacket connected to a handheld device. <laughs> my phone died in West London and I was like, well, I guess I live here now. So, uh, these are the rules. I'm, uh, I'm 19, recently turned 19. So, yeah, I know. I was surprised too, to figure that out. <laughs> I woke up on the day and I was like, I feel like I've been going longer with this than I have. I was actually created in a lab. Scientists went to make the world's first 30-year-old teenager, so they made me have two kids and a mortgage and a minivan. Um, I'm at uni now. I do uh, management with marketing, so I don't give a fuck either. I just thought maybe like know that. Um, you know, being at uni is like this. Uh, certain things I can't really do, like uh, like Netflix and chill. Can't really do that. The best I can do is maybe like one, two, three movies and boobies. That's the closest <laughs> I can get to that. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm in therapy, because, like, obviously. Um, oh, give me a cheer if you're in a therapy, by the way. Anyone in therapy? Okay, that's good. Uh, therapy is good. Therapy is like a weekly talk show, and I'm the only guest. It's really good. It's like Jimmy Fallon without fake laughing. You know what I mean? Uh, my therapist says something to me. He goes, if you ever think of harming yourself or killing yourself, you should do what I do, and, and read a book or watch a TV show, right? Which sounds like really dumb advice, but I can't tell you how many times I've been on the edge of a bridge, like, I should finish Game of Thrones and just step back. Um, yeah, I, uh, I moved recently, just uh, to Pimlico actually, just over the bridge. So um, don't follow me home, please. Um, yeah, uh, the, the, the people that are like redoing the flat, they're, they're like sending people over, like a handyman. One dong, and, uh, two there's, dongs. Like, there's handyman coming over and uh, they sent someone over at 7 p.m., which is like too late. I texted him, I was like, is he coming over for dinner and sex? What's going on here? But he was like, he was doing like my flat, right? And so <laughs> he opens the door. I open the door. Why would he open my door? Um, Three dogs. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. Uh, Usman, uh, Usman, is that what I'm saying? Yeah, right? that's yeah, Usman. Uh, Usman, like, I think I speak on behalf of everyone in the room when I say 19? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. Like, 19. Jesus. What year like, was you born? 
2003? Okay. Uh, we didn't quiz him. I'm trying to catch me out like that. <laughs> Junior, Junior's right? so smart. He'll fucking know if you're yeah. lying. He knows math and books. <laughs> the only two things there is to know. is four. Minus one. That's three. Quick maths. Uh, as, as been like... And like I'm not like you're obviously very. I'm not sure how, if you're intentionally deadpan. It was just really low energy. I don't think you engaged the audience enough. I don't think they ever really got to know you or got involved with you. And I think maybe like I'm not maybe I'm not saying lose the deadpan entirely, but maybe just something a little bit more engaging. Um, or the op. Like I felt like you were sort of hovering in the middle yeah, of it. That's right. Like your material was sort of deadpan, but you were a little bit more animated versus being. I felt like your body language and how you delivered didn't match the material always. Do you know? Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that, that's sort of what I felt like. Because if you're going to go like hardcore deadpan, which you could do because all the stuff, like I'm kind of afraid to criticize you because I don't want you to actually kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but like, I just think it's got to match a little bit more. Do you know what I mean? Like, not really. Um, <laughs> not really. I fucking hate I've you. I've got this 19 year old thing, this thing, the 19. Um, I can't go over that. Uh, Oh, my little brother's 19 as well. And if I saw him hanging out of you, I'd call the police. Um, <laughs> just think. Uh, I don't know. You, you was kind of... You lost the crowd. You lost the crowd. Um, on, on a normal set, what you did, how you're a bit slow and dry and deadpan and not that funny, that would... You would have a good... Not that... <laughs> the, not all punch... That sounded really bad, sorry. Um, but it wasn't like big punchline, big jokes. But on a normal night, you, you do okay. But on a gong show, you've got to be like really bang, 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 bang. That's why you didn't get through. But you are funny and you have good material. Yeah. But um, just, yeah, it was a bit dry for this kind of competition. So don't kill yourself. Um. <laughs> how, how long have you been going, husband? Uh, almost a year. Almost a year. So that's basically nothing, man. Just keep, keep plugging at it. Since you was, when, what age did you when you started doing? 18. Okay. Stop cool. quizzing. Yeah, I'm I'm fucking, what am I? Yes, <laughs> you're not a fucking bouncer. It's fine, man. Ladies and gentlemen, hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. I think we got time for at least one more from the bucket, Junior. 19. 19. What we got? Ollie Hayes. Ollie Hayes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and those in between. I hope you're well. Thank you for the applause. It's not the first time I've been given the clap under a bridge. So, huh? Let me tell you, homeless people get a bad rap. People are quite harsh. They say stuff like, oh, they're like pigeons. They're such a nuisance. I don't agree. The homeless are like our people, like you and I. But I do see similarities. They hang out in groups, yeah. They socialize in the park. True. And you're not meant to throw bread at them, but I do. So there's that. Uh, let me tell you, my jokes are a bit like the kids in North Korea, where some of them work, some of them don't, and the ones that don't disappear. <laughs> there's that. I went to a gay club once, only once. Oh. I went to a gay club once, only once in Poland. It was all right. Drinks were cheap. And uh, on the dance floor, having a good time. I have one move. I did this for 20 minutes and then I was asked to leave. And uh, in the middle of the dancing, someone left a pair of One pants dong, on the floor. Dongs. And a part Three of me. Okay then. <laughs> Fair enough. Wow. They were waiting for wow. that. Was, uh, they were yeah, I, um, I, think I, I think I speak on behalf of a lot of the audience when I was surprised when you didn't immediately start doing magic tricks when you walked on. I thought, um, like. That, that haircut's a choice. Um, Ollie, 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 how long have you been doing comedy, Ollie? Oh, uh, God, like a year, I guess. Like, yeah. you, like, you're quite confident in your delivery, like the jokes. Like Draco Malfoy, straight out of rehab or something. Like, <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to give feedback. Um, Ollie, Ollie um, I, like, I, the confidence is good, the material is not that. Like, uh -huh. you, you, like, you, you, the vibe you gave her wasn't likable, like to the audience, like coming up straight away. Like I feel really? like you need to, you need to do more to build rapport with the audience coming on. Okay. You, you came on and like the, the, under a bridge joke, and then you sort of laughed at your own joke, and they didn't like really respond to it. It's, like just keep going, keep working hard. The confidence is good. You're obviously still on that cam performance stage, and that's one of the biggest parts of the hurdles. Sure. But did the material and the act needs to come up with the level of the confidence? Fair I enough. think likability is a thing, right? Like yeah. you got. I think coming out, like talking about people who are like suffering. 
you know, from homelessness. Like, you yeah. gotta fucking, that better be the smartest, fucking best written joke if you're gonna make a joke like that. Okay. And the punchline is throwing bread at them. It just wasn't good enough for that. You know what I mean? I think oh. you can make a joke about anything, but if you're gonna hit a topic that people get a little bit more, get their backs up a little bit more, it better be the fucking funniest thing ever because then people will go I'm going to laugh but I feel fucking bad about myself for laughing at yeah, this I mean, and look at this crowd like 90% of them are homeless look at that guy yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> the idea of Karen you're not if you're going to do them kind of jokes it's going to be really 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 funny uh-huh. and um but they they were just average jokes in a very um dubious topic so um but yeah very confident you came on stage very confident great hair as well I like the hair Thanks. very eye catching um, but you got to make sure the jokes match the level of confidence and sure. the likability thing as well. I'm not saying you're not likable. I'm sure you're a nice person, but you, they, they didn't like you. They, <laughs> <laughs> they was itching to get their, their dicks up you. No, sorry, okay. <laughs> their dicks up at you. Oh. Um, so, uh, oh, yeah, right, yeah, you got to make sure you're... At this kind of show, make sure you're more likable. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Cheers. Cool. Cheers. Cool. 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 Oh, hey! hey! What a fucking tune that is, by the way. Uh, right, we're going to the last one on the list, and if, depending on how this goes, we might have one more from the bucket after that. But ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your last one on the list, Lucas Jeffco! All right, how are we doing, everyone? Are we good? Good, good. It's, nice to, it's very nice to be here in uh, Darth Punk's anus. I don't know where we are. Uh, I'll introduce myself. My name is Lucas. I'm from a place called Essex. Uh, anyone in from Essex? Yes! <laughs> Thank God for that. Uh, there's a lot of negative stereotypes about people from Essex, aren't there? Like everyone says, like people there use like fake tan. So they've got like this really orange skin. And they always say they like bleach their hair. So they've got this like pale white hair. But I got it the wrong way round. Ginger. All right, fuck that one then. Uh, <laughs> I get a lot of questions about my hair. It's not a minute yet, mate. <laughs> it's my agent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> appreciate the sport. Um, yeah, like I was saying, I get a lot of questions about my hair. Mostly just uh, why. And you know, basically I got this haircut because I thought it would make me look a little bit cool, maybe a bit edgy even, but I just end up looking like someone's aunt. <laughs> you know, just anyone's aunt. It's not great. I don't like my hairdresser, guys. I really hate him. He's a bit of a dickhead. First of all, because he made me look like this. Second of all, you won't even tell me how to grow a beard. Like, thanks again. One dog. my fans. He won't even tell me how to grow a beard. Like, it's so embarrassing. Like, I'm a full-grown man, technically. And I can't even grow facial hair, right? Like, my little cousin's got more facial hair than me, okay? She's 13. Two dongs. I shouldn't tell jokes, should I? I should just deal with heckles. That went, <laughs> that went way better. Three dongs. Oh. One the dust. I, I, mean, I thought that was a little bit harsh, but I mean, you, you tried to gong him before the one yeah. minute was even up, which is not even allowed. Kind of, uh, and I, thought, I thought you dealt with that really well the first time we come through. Um, Lucas, you. how long have you been doing stand-up? Like a year now. Like a year now. Uh, keep working hard. It wasn't your crowd tonight. They, 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 I don't think they gave you enough of a chance, to be honest. Um, I, I thought you had a good persona. I don't think they gave you enough time to get into your rhythm. I think that really derailed it. Uh, yeah, Kate, what do you think? Yeah, same. I think it's hard because it's like the end of the night. I think people are kind of tired and a little bit worn down. But you do have like such a good persona on stage and so much confidence and stuff right off the top and the way you handled like, them raising it right away. I thought it was great. So I just think, like, yeah, fucking, you're great. Keep going. Junior? Well done. The lighting's not great in here, so we could, I couldn't tell if you were ginger or not. So that first joke... Ah, that you were, yeah. it's the orange. <laughs> yeah, it's too much, yeah. yeah. I, I couldn't tell, so I didn't get it at first. But yeah. I'm not there. even that ginger anymore. Like, I've been going a bit brown, but like I've got all the trauma from it, so I feel like I still talk about it too much. There you go. Um, I couldn't tell, but uh, the joke you did with the agent, that was the best. Maybe you guys can do a thing together. Yeah, we should be a double act. Because that was your best. Well, it's all downhill from there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that was I was there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I'll remember you for that bit. So well done. Thanks. You cool. too. You too. Well done. Legend. Um, nope. What's your name? Lucas. Well done, Lucas. Keep at it. Lucas Jeffco. <laughs> What do we think, Sound Booth? One more from the bucket, or are we done? 
Nah, let's do one more. Hope one more for the bucket! All right, last one. Who the fuck's it gonna be? Someone good? Well, let's not bank on it. Uh, this one's called Scott Penman! <laughs> Come out for a bit of fun, but it's like so serious. Like, like one of those depressing episodes of Fresh Prince of Bel Air, like where there's no soundtrack at the end and we're all just really worried about Carlton. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, Jesus. All right, okay, Jesus Christ. You know what? I've got a minute, right? We all want to leave anyway. I've got a minute anyway, and then you can then you do what you want with your big penises. Put them up, keep them there, hold them. I don't know, but. Just shouldn't be so awkward with plastic dicks in the room, is all I'm saying. Right, okay. I, uh, I've decided to live my truth. This is it now. I'm living my truth. No more. There's no more lies. No more bullshit. I don't get laid a lot. Could have guessed that. No, it's fine. We'll amplify it. I've got a minute. Could have guessed it. Is it because uh, the fringe? Is it the tramp stamp tattoo? I've got one of these. Oh. <laughs> I can't get naked with a girl. If I get naked with a girl, like, it takes months for them to see the back end of me. I like, walk out backwards like, 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 like she's like a fucking queen and I'm a servant in Bridgerton. Yes, okay. <laughs> Wonderful sex. Thank you. It's clearly obvious that drugs are too easily to get in London. <laughs> It's a, it's a phone call, it's a text. You get, you get a Gordon Ramsay downloadable PDF menu these days, right? You get a text, it's that easy. And like you forget it's illegal to buy drugs until like the guy like you go to meet is a child you have to meet in the park. And he's texting you like, yeah, meet me by the swings. <laughs> and this feels double illegal now. It's hard, man. And no one of the country's fucked, right? Yeah. yeah. Economy's fucked. Queen's dead. Can't even go out and buy milk. Can't buy bread. But you fucking damn sure I got that text. Beep, beep. Yeah, free for two, Lizzie specials, yeah. <laughs> free back for two, yeah. Let's celebrate this funeral in style, you know what I mean? Hey, get it up. Get that dick up. Show me, please, that one final dick. Three dongs. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you. Scott. Yeah. Scott Penman there, gogging himself up oh, in an unusual uh, move after waiting all night. Um, oh, all, all night. So Scott, Scott, we know, well, obviously I know Scott, Scott well, Scott works around the club and has been there for like, Scott, how you doing, man? Oh, I don't know, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, it's just, it's, it's, it's becoming too much, isn't it? What, life or, uh, <laughs> life or comedy? Oh, no, mate. I mean, one is the same, right? Yeah. It's got deep, man. It's got deep. Uh, I just, I want to live my truth, guys. I mean, I'm not going to give feedback, Junior. I took my yeah, drink. Scott always does this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he enjoys not being funny. Um, <laughs> he's he's red, but, so, uh, but no, well, Scott's a friend of, well, not friends, but. Uh, <laughs> just keep hanging out. Yeah, we hang out. Hey, he's here all the time, man. He's a cool guy. And I like him, not the person, but. Uh, he's cool. No, yeah, I don't know why you're still here for doing this for yourself. But um, you're doing it. So I'm gonna critique you. Don't quit your day job. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but your jokes. I'm gonna be honest. That joke you done. Your jokes are actually kind of I funny. Jo I hate doing jokes. Your jokes. Yeah. You should like give me your give someone else. Give me your jokes. I'll, yeah. yeah. That joke about the free. Because I get texts all the time to my phone as well uh, from drug you, dealers. Can I ask you? Yeah. Go on. Like, is it not hard like, to come and do material when people look at you like this, like... That's how comedy is. Yeah, yeah that's what comedy... That's but, like, is that the gong show thing, or is that the no, just, just no, be funnier thing, or...? No, when you're funny, they, they <laughs> smile and stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens. See that? That's yeah, what happens. Yeah, that's, 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 that's it. it. Yeah. yeah. Like, because the thing is, these guys want to be entertained, right? Yeah. They want, they pay to come out, they want us to fucking laugh and have a good time and shit like yeah. that, right? Do you enjoy doing comedy? You look like you don't even like it. No, to today, this really uh, Yeah. Really, uh, it's just, just how they reacted to no, you? No, like, I just, I just, I had to take a break from comedy because I was doing butlings, right? And, like, I, I'm like, I don't know what that is. What is but, that? But it's, it's, like a, it's like a holiday <laughs> part. It's, it's a drug. It's a holiday. It's a holiday so I haven't had a chance okay. to like get up and do reps and like. Right, okay, so okay. getting up is really. No, no buttons. And, yeah, no, but, I don't know. No buttons. Sorry, I haven't. <laughs> I, 
I'm an immigrant. I don't know things over here. Screaming kids, and it's it's weird doing these acting classes and that, and it's like, oh, this is just. This has become oh. way more therapy than I yeah. was saying. Hey, man, I'll wait there all fucking night. At least give me some value. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the thing is, it looked like you weren't enjoying it, and yeah. they weren't enjoying it because you didn't yeah. look like you were having That's, a good time. I kind of wanted to come and try and upset them all a bit. That's why I was a bit animated at the start. And then I was yeah. like, ah, yeah, I lost them instantly. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so, Fine. Uh, Scott Penman. Thanks so much, guys. So long, farewell. I'll be the same as you. Adieu. Adieu to you. That was our last act of the evening. Give a round of applause to everyone who performed tonight. Can we please have the four finalists back to the stage? We've got Ely Maroof. George Wheeler. Louis McLean. And Finn Jacob. So, first of all, big round of applause for these guys all getting to the final. Uh, we're going to have a quick deliberation with the judges, and then we'll decide who wins, and they will, get, they will win a spot on the show here at the Vauxhall Comedy Club. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the judges have made a decision. It was a close one, but like genuinely, I think any one of them could have won it tonight. Uh, I think some of them have won it before as well. So tonight we're gonna go with Louis McLean! <laughs> Who was the angry ginger one, if you can't remember which one that was. Uh, so that is the end of our evening together, guys. Woo! Uh, you've been a wonderful audience. This gig happens every week. Please do come back again. Please read TripAdvisor reviews online. Give five stars to Vauxhall Comedy Club on Twitter, on TripAdvisor, on Google, and whatever you can do. Uh, big round of applause for everyone you saw tonight. And one more round of applause for the wonderful Lou McLean, who won. And your judges, Junior Booker. And Kate Barron. I've been Mark Brown. Thank you very much. Good night. Give the dildos back. Give the dildos back. Sorry.